Hi, my name is Monica Hernandez, and I'm glad to share with you the outcomes of our research title, Evaluation of Learning Attributes in Higher Education and Methodological Guide Validation. The Washington Accord defines learning outcomes as the graduate attributes, which are a set of skills, attitudes, and knowledge that students must possess at the time they graduate from academic engineering programs. The evaluation of these attributes is a complex process because it implies a transformation of the predominant pedagogical models used in higher education into a learner-centered one. Incorporating learning outcomes requires the combined efforts of teachers, managers, administrators, the support of IT units, curricular advisors, and significant changes in pedagogical and assessment strategies. This paper outlines the evaluation of the strengths and weaknesses of a methodology for evaluating attributes using focus group with professors with experience in these processes. The methodology considers a, a student-centered approach, a standard procedure with a common set of indicators, traceability for students' outcomes, coordinated work among stakeholders, and the plan for the development of a learning analytics system to facilitate data collection and visualization. The guide is made up of the following three stages. Attributes mapping in the curriculum, evaluation stage, and improvement plan. About the method, we did a focus group with professors of a higher education institution focused on STEAM education, with experience in the evaluation of uh, learning attributes under the guidance of the Washington Accord. We used propulsive sampling for recruiting the participants who were from different disciplines such as science, humanities, and engineering. About the data collection, for collecting data, we proposed a two-phase design. In the first phase, the participants were instructed to read the methodological guide previously and write their suggestions for improvements. Participants that didn't send their suggestions were excluded from the focus group. The purpose was to guarantee that every participant knew the proposal in advance. Finally, we analyzed data using the grounded theory principles. For the first cycle of analysis, we used evaluation coding, so the codes were added next to each sentence or idea in the transcription. The second stage consisted in using pattern coding method where we collapse into subteams the codes from the first stage. And finally, we organized the themes into subteams. What did we find? In accordance with the objective of the study, we identified the weaknesses and the strengths of the guide from the perspective of professors. However, other issues emerged from the analysis and were classified as contextual elements. Let's see which categories emerged. The first two themes were consolidation of the evaluation process in the guide and improvements derived from the attribute evaluation process. Both of them were considered strengths. The next themes were categorized as weaknesses, rigid rules, definition of roles and responsibilities, and suitability of instruments and tools to support the process. The next two themes are considered contextual factors, neither strengths nor weaknesses. Recognition and adequacy of workload and professors' lack of motivation. If we summarize the weaknesses detected by participants, we can observe that they need the guide to have more support tools for aiding the academic programs during the evaluation attributes process. The weaknesses mentioned by participants are intercepted by two contextual elements, the lack of professors' motivation to participate in the evaluation of attributes, as well as the concern of participants on the inadequate workload assignments. The motivation of professors may be influenced by the autonomy culture at academic institutions as well as the traditional role of instructors as providers of information. Concerning the second contextual element, the leader of accreditation commissions usually carry out tasks that are not recognized in their salaries, and they have to deal with the resistance of peers to contribute to the process for the same reason. This could explain the urgency of participants of having mediation strategies to promote the involvement of all the staff and tools to facilitate the evaluation process. Even though the contextual elements are not strictly related to the methodological guide, it is necessary to think of strategies to support universities to continue promoting quality management processes effectively and considering the staff needs. These are great challenges for higher education institutions. Although the study was aimed to validate the methodological guide, this research also allowed to delve into the subjective experience of participants who are immersed in attribute evaluation processes. We consider this experience is a valuable input for institutions for current and future accreditation processes. Thank you very much.